Hi everyone, uh, today's yeah, episode one of uh, I'm finally getting onto YouTube to translate all my Leo Tolstoy link documents across to YouTube so you can actually uh, get through the content without having to, uh, to read so much. Uh, episode one is just going to be a little bit of an origin story for those that aren't familiar with zero friction cycling. So how does zero friction cycling start or why did I start it and um, what, what's my main focus areas? So in short, um, when Friction Facts was brought out by Ceramic Speed, uh, there was a big vacancy in, the, I guess, the independent testing for lubricants, and it's always been sort of fairly obvious to me as to why you know chain lubricants are such a crucial part of your uh, bicycle, not just for races that are you know, looking to save watts, but just for your outright drivetrain longevity and running costs. And um, there was a lot of work still to be done in that space, and uh, there just really needed to be somebody to step in there, and I had the opportunity and the time to do so. Uh, and I wanted to expand a lot on the work that uh, was started by Friction Facts. So moving the testing out of just sort of an outright efficiency test uh, in a lab to really assessing lubricants performance, covering off uh, crucial things such as do they have any initial penetration issues? How do they go um, you know, when they're exposed to contamination, both dry contamination and wet contamination? And so we get a full picture of the lubricant uh, performance as opposed to just its outright efficiency uh, in a laboratory. And so, yeah, I started with uh, just the one test machine and started doing uh, the, the test work on a robust test process uh, that, that um, runs for thousands of kilometres instead of just being quite short. And then over time now, as, as I've become quite established as, as really the world's leading independent test facility, I've now got three machines that are pretty well booked for the next nearly 12 months uh, and we're just getting more and more uh, data and information all the time. And so... Uh, you know, obviously we use that not only for product selection, so zero friction cycling. Um, the way I'm able to be completely independent is that I use the information from the testing to have a retail side of the store. So from the testing, I know what are the top products that I should stock and recommend, and I know what products that I should avoid. And so the retail side of the business uh, supports the, the testing. So that's the business model that um, I decided to experiment with uh, a number of years ago. And that's proven very successful, which is, um, you know, in the past, I think it's proven for a lot of places, quite difficult to get a testing facility that's you know, economically viable. You've got to have the right uh, business model to be able to support that and remain completely independent. And yeah, thankfully this, uh, I guess, little test experiment on zero friction cycling and seeing if I could create an independent test facility, uh, that's that's been working extremely well. So uh, as many of you know, I sort of always uh, in my documents and, uh, and posts. I thank you very much all the time for the support on the retail side because that does uh, cover the testing side. And also now uh, I do get a lot of uh, testing uh, work from major manufacturers. So that's something that's been growing strongly over the last few years as really zero friction cycling has established itself as I guess really the independent test facility that uh, if a manufacturer wants independent information to back their product's performance as opposed to just their own, which is always going to be taken with a bit of a grain of salt, then really it's it's all that sort of, um, I guess, requests and contracts uh, are coming to myself so that they can get their product benchmarked against quite a number of uh, you know tests and other products now. So I've got uh, yeah, the retail side and the private test side, as well as the testing that I do under my own volition, which is not locked up in, you know, in any contracts and it's all open and the data's you know, open for all to see. So... That's really zero friction cycling uh, in, a, in a, I guess, a bit of a nutshell and a very short origin story. And so episode two that we'll move to, um, that'll be coming out very soon, uh, we'll actually start moving into me sharing all, you know, a number of the things that we've learned and we'll continue on with a whole bunch of fun episodes, giving you the main takeaways on how you can save a whole bunch of, you know, not just what's for races, but a whole lot of drivetrain wear, easy maintenance tips, and obviously bringing your cost to run uh, of your bicycle right down and yeah just the key hints and tips that you want to know about what's uh, everyone's really realizing now is a really crucial uh, part of your bicycle especially with parts of your drivetrain every year getting sort of more and more expensive and uh, at the moment also quite hard to get hold of oh yeah uh, by the way uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to uh, like and subscribe to the channel and other youtube type things like share with your friends uh, so now to keep you up to date with the latest low friction news and hints and tips. And um, yeah, also put any comments down below and I can uh, try to look at those and uh, take them into account for future episodes. 